Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' famous book. Tarzan lies unconscious on the ground. Sabor sees a lithe, hairless body in eight and motionless before her. Crouching, snarling, her lean haunches gather beneath her, her back arches with a spring, her jaws gaping to reveal her yellow fangs. Merciless hatred for the thing which lies so helpless in front of her, gleams from her baleful, yellowish eyes. Poised, tense, crouched for the leap, the lioness waits for some movement, some motion which will send her hurling upon her victim. There is a moment of silence, a tense moment, a moment in which furious death waits to execute its grim mission. Poised, waiting. Slowly, Sabor's animal brain connects the presence of her cub with Tarzan. Hister was devouring the cub. Tarzan fought Hister. The cub is safe. Slowly, suspiciously, the great beast relaxes. The hair on her short mane gradually lies down, and her tensed haunches straighten. Slowly, very slowly, she advances toward Tarzan's limp body. Snarling deep in her throat, she stops, showing this strange creature lying so still before her the deference of fear. Cautious, ever ready to crush the life out of the thing with a mighty paw should it move, she advances closer and closer, step by step. Her sharp, pungent breath is hot on Tarzan's neck. Sabor sniffs. The thing has a strange scent. Not the scent of an ape. Sabor is puzzled. Tarzan stirs. Moans a little in his unconsciousness. Sabor leaps back, snarling, her powerful paw raised to crush the head of that strange creature. Slowly, she puts her foot back on the ground, circles Tarzan, and without further ado, trots away, urging her cubs before her. Sabor, the merciless killer, the feared, the dreaded, Sabor, the beast, has learned gratitude. Tarzan lies unconscious. The fall would have been sufficient to kill an ordinary man, but Tarzan breathes. The jungle sun sinks lower and lower. Suddenly there is no day. A dank, steaming mist arises from the ground and drifts in great clouds through the forest like ghosts of massive monsters returned from some primitive jungle of eons before. Tarzan still does not move. He lies easy prey to the savage beasts of the jungle, the deadly insects, the sleeping leopard, the murderous gorillas, and worst of all, the snake. Hista, a silent, cold, crushing, slithering death. The moon comes up, making the jungle a wilderness of tall shadows, growing in a myriad of puddles of moonlight. The jungle becomes replete with sound, the whimpering cry of the lemurs, the weird laughter of the hyenas at the water hole, the roar of Numa, the lion, walking in imperial disdain, heralding his approach to the water hole. A cold, dead weight is slowly coiling itself around Tarzan's body. Its heavy, gliding pressure stirs him. With a growl of anger, Tarzan regains consciousness. <laughs> the small steamer, bearing our passengers and the mutinous crew, steams down the golden path laid by the moon off the sea on the West African coast. The same moon which shines down upon the inner Tarzan, his cousin Clayton could see if he chose to look through a porthole of the ship's salon. How closely related, and yet how far removed these two. Tarzan, the ape man, and William Cecil Clayton. The four in the salon, Jane and Professor Porter, Clayton and the captain, discovered that they locked in. The crew was mutinied. Newton, the seaman, has informed the captain. Newton leaves. A scream is heard. It's his. Grabbing the two automatics, the captain and Clayton rush to the door. It's locked. We're pawed in. No, oh, what are they doing to that poor man? There, there, dear. Everything will be all right. I'm afraid it won't be all right. This is mutiny. <laughs> we can't stand here and let them torture that man this way. Open the door. Open it, do you hear that? I won't stop it. I can't stand here and listen to that. I'm going to try and shoot the latch off the door. Clayton. We'll do nothing of the sort. I'm captain here, and as long as I am captain, I'll be obeyed. Understand that. We've a devilish grave situation. This is mutiny. If I can get them to open that door of their own will, we have a chance. If I can't, 
We're better off in here. I suggest, Mr. Clayton, that you leave the matter entirely in the captain's hands. Oh, sorry, Captain. Not at all. Miss Porter. Yes, Captain. You will find in the top drawer of my desk a small jade green bottle. Its contents are deadly. I hope it proves to be a souvenir of an unsuccessful mutiny. You don't think, Captain, that it will be necessary? This is the scum of Port Set. And Port Set, my dear Clayton. Well, you've seen it. I found the bottle, Captain. Thank you. Uh, isn't there some way that we can placate these mutineers, Captain? If it's money, why, I have a little... And I have a great deal. Now see if you can buy them off. If they take the ship, everything on it is theirs anyway. Yaunt, my first mate, is in back of this. And Yaunt is no fool. Uh, rather an intelligent fellow, in fact. Uh, I've had several conversations with him. Seems rather interested in archaeology. You stand away from the door, Miss Porter. Thank you. Mr. Yaunt! Mr. Yaunt, do you hear me? Yaunt! Yeah, I heard you, Captain. Come here and unlock this door. And get shot down. Oh, thank you, Captain. Throw them two automatics. They're in your desk out the port first. Are you presuming to order me, Mr. Yaunt? You'll lose your papers for this. <laughs> My papers? You're on the high seas now, Skipper. Not at the Admiralty. My papers? They've been changed, Tracy. They're captain's papers now. You're mad. This is mutiny. Do you realize what that means? Yes, and you'd better realize, too. Throw out those automatics on the deck. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, Mr. Yacht, that I'll see this ship run aground in Hades before I'll take orders from you. Yeah? Well, we'll quit the bloody arms off your nosy man, Newton, here, and throw him over the side. If those guns aren't thrown out, on the deck in exactly one minute. No, oh! Mouser! Throw them out, please! Just throw them out! Oh, Captain, throw them out, please! Please, please throw them out! Oh, oh, there goes mine. All right. Now, where's the other one? Well, I... I guess... I guess they've got us there. Ah! Did you take the clip out of that automatic before you chucked it out, Clayton? No, no, I didn't. Uh, not very clever of you. Well, here goes. Uh, You're learning to take orders readily, Captain. Come in here. Oh, I just happened to think. Quick, Father, give me that map. Uh, why, yes. Uh, where did I... Uh, why, here it is. Angle, you engage what this door. It's either the ex-captain or any of his passengers starting to... Yeah, I saw it. Well, Tracy, it seems... You a... dirty cat, you. Shut up, Clayton. Mm. I won't shut up. And what? Ah! Oh. You, you feel Satan. Stand back there, all of you. Or I'll start blasting. That's just to show you how this ship is going to be run from now on. Only next time, I'll use the business end and not the butt of the gun. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd killed him, Yon. It doesn't make a great deal of difference, Tracy. Not to you, it doesn't. They hang them just as high for mutiny as they do for murder. Not when there aren't any witnesses. You don't mean... That there won't be any witnesses... Yes. Tarzan regains consciousness. A sinewy thing of all muscle is wrapping itself around him, slowly encircling him. He voices the ferocious cry of a battling beast. The contracting link wound around him tightens. Tarzan struggles. Then suddenly he feels himself lifted high in the air. Another moment... And he finds himself safe on the broad back of Tantor the elephant. Tantor, his friend. Despite his aching head, Tarzan gives a call of triumph. Tantor, the great beast of the jungle, whom even Sabor fears, hears the call of his friend. The wise beast knows that all is well with the white ape upon his back. Tantor is happy, too, for Tarzan is dearer to Tantor than all else in the world. A strange jungle friendship, as strong as it is odd. Tantor throws back his great trunk and trumpets to tell the fastest of the whole forest and its denizens that the mighty Tantor and his friend Tarzan are passing on their way. Let all beware. Tarzan feels himself all over gingerly and then shrugs. Nearness to death is life not adventure in the jungle. Guiding Tantor by kicking him behind the ear, 
Tarzan directs the great beast from the seashore and his cabin. Tantor sways along his way at a speed which is almost unbelievable for so clumsy an appearance, tearing up the trees and brush which impede his way. Then Tarzan hears the beating of the surf, and in a few minutes they come out of the jungle onto the beach. A strip of white sand, a sea of darkness divided by golden bands. Tarzan looks down the path of the moon on the water. He gasps. A boat. That means men. Tarzan the ape thrills because he sees in them that which he most wants to be, man. Tarzan the man. <laughs> 